We have some breaking news for you now. We're learning more details about that subpoena from the Republican-led Senate Intelligence Committee of Donald Trump Jr. Two sources telling CNN that Donald Trump Jr. is balking at answering any more questions about two topics in particular, the now infamous June 2016 Trump Tower meeting and talks about a potential Trump Tower project in Moscow. CNN's Kara Scannell joins me now breaking this news. Kara, why is he objecting to this? Well, essentially, Jake, according to sources, Don Jr. doesn't want to have a complete do-over of his testimony from December 2017 when he met with the Senate Intelligence Committee and two other committees discussing these topics, including Trump Tower meeting and the Trump Tower Moscow discussions to develop a, a project there. Uh, now, the, the issues here is that we're learning some new information that Chairman um, Richard Burr of the Senate Intelligence Committee has told some of his members and his colleagues that they initially began these conversations with Donald Trump Jr.'s team back in December, that um, there were tentative agreements for Don Jr. to come in and meet with them in April, but then those talks fell apart after it was clear that the Senate Intelligence Committee didn't want to place any limitations on their uh, discussions with Donald Trump Jr. They had provided his legal team with a list of 20 topics they wanted to discuss with no agreements to limit in any way the scope or the length of the time that he would be questioned. And that was something that Don Jr.'s lawyers objected to, they thought when they had some follow-up questions that it meant he would come in for an hour or two hours, but then it began to appear that this was going to be a long, open-ended session with some of the members in themselves being able to appear. Now, that led to Burr's committee voting to issue the subpoena, and uh, now we're at a bit of a standoff. The next move is really back to Chairman Burr, and is he going to seek to compel Donald Trump Jr. to come in because they really don't seem to be able to um, reach an agreement on Don Jr. answering either of those topics, Jake? All right, Kara Scannell bringing us the breaking news. Thank you uh, so much. Uh, Sabrina, let me start with you. Uh, what do you make of this? Why not answer questions about this if there's nothing to hide? Well, that's the <laughs> question precisely for Donald Trump Jr., and that's why the committee wants him to come back in, because he had testified privately before Congress before, and we've seen transcripts of some of those conversations. And really, the heart of this is the Trump Tower meeting in June of 2016, which Don Jr. himself set up when he, the, he was offered dirt on Hillary Clinton, and then negotiations around Trump Tower Moscow. And he had told the committee that he was only peripherally aware of those negotiations. Michael Cohen, Trump's uh, former personal attorney, testified that he actually briefed Don Jr. maybe 10 times on uh, those negotiations. So that's a question uh, before him. Did Although, just to interject quickly, Michael Cohen is not necessarily He's not a credible the witness. most credible witness, <laughs> yeah. but that's, to a, be fair, that's a question to, yeah. to be answered by Don Jr., the discrepancy, to explain that discrepancy. And then, of course, the, the, whether or not he told his father about that Trump Tower uh, meeting in June of 2016. And there is some indication in the Mueller report that perhaps there were conversations between Don Jr. and his father about the nature of that meeting. He told the committee, of course, that he did not discuss it at all with his father. And of course, uh, Mueller and his team declined to bring any charges against Donald Trump Jr. Uh, they did say when talking about the, the Trump Tower meeting with that Russian lawyer uh, who promised dirt on Hillary Clinton, uh, that A, it, it wasn't clear that Donald Trump Jr. knew that that was inappropriate, and B, they got nothing of value. So that's why they didn't go forward with any charges. But I mean, he had been basically essentially cleared uh, in terms of no charges brought, but now we have all of this controversy. We do, but I mean, the scope of the investigation is different. I mean, this isn't a, uh, a, a court of law or bringing uh, charges. This is something that, you know, really of all the investigations in Washington, the most measured one, at least it seems from the outside, has been that Senate investigation. So this is something that it seems to me that uh, Senator Burr and uh, Senator Warner and others on the committee you know, simply want to put a bow on something. But uh, you know, when you have others on Capitol Hill, like Senator Lindsey Graham and others, essentially you know, saying, ignore this subpoena, it does make you wonder exactly, is there more there? There may not be more there. It may just be you know, um, sort of a bit of uh, paperwork. But it seems to me that Senator Burr, since he's the only one uh, not up for re-election, one of the few not up for re-election, the Republicans here, uh, you know, this is going to be fascinating. He has not spoken about this at all. We'll see if he holds to his guns and uh, makes him come up there. And, and let, let's just talk about that because uh, Senator Lindsey Graham, Republican of South Carolina, chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, indeed, as Jeff said, advised that Donald Trump Jr. not comply with a subpoena from his Senate colleague, Republican colleague. Take a listen. As I understand it, this subpoena that relates to what Michael Cohen said about some meetings and about the, uh, the Trump Tower in Russia. And if I were Donald Trump Jr.'s lawyer, I would tell him, you don't need to go back into this environment anymore. 
you've been there for hours and hours and hours, and nothing being alleged here changes the outcome of the Mueller investigation. I would call it a day. It's the exact opposite of his position during Clinton impeachment uh, when he said it's important to, prov to, to comply with subpoenas. This is a subpoena from the Senate Intelligence Committee. Uh, he, Lindsey Graham does, is not on that committee. He doesn't know, actually, what Senator Burr and his, co and his colleagues uh, need, think they need to find out. And incidentally, I think all the Republican colleagues of Senator Burr on that committee, with the partial exception of, of John Cornyn, have either have been quiet or have supported Senator Burr. So all these people taking cheap shots from the galleries, they don't know. It might be a bow on the package, as Jeff says, but it could be something kind of important, you know? The Senate Intelligence Committee isn't a frivolous group of people. They have serious staff. They have, Senator Burr doesn't just wander out and say, I think I'd like to get a little more detail from this guy. They may have something serious they'd like to find out, not about the legal question of conspiracy, which presumably Mueller's disposed of, but about the counterintelligence issues. And speaking of counterintelligence, I want to play this sound for you, Karen. It's President Trump today. Talk, asking, uh, he was answering a question whether or not he'd commit to never using any information from a foreign adversary. Take a listen. Well, I never did use, as you probably know. That's what the Mueller report was all about. They said no collusion, and I would certainly agree to that. I don't need it. He used it just, <laughs> just as a fact check. Yes. He used it all the time. He cited WikiLeaks yes. and the stolen materials. He would read from the, the WikiLeaks, Correct. the stolen materials, and all the to, time at rallies. And ask people to get more of it if they could, right? And the, Special counsel certainly made that very clear. I, you know, I, I think what you're saying is really important. There's so much we don't know. And for Barr to take the extraordinary step of a subpoena, clearly the negotiations broke Burr, down. Burr, Burr, sorry. <laughs> sorry, wrong one. Uh, you know, that tells you that it's more, I, I would think that suggests it's more than just putting a bow on something, particularly when you consider there's still these, what is it, 14 cases that are still out there that Mueller referred that do potentially have to do with national security and intelligence matters. So I think the level of seriousness is such that uh, first of all, we know President Trump lies all the time. And clearly, Don Jr. has now been caught potentially lying, and it could be something related to our national security. Well, we don't know that. We don't could know that Don Trump, Donald Trump Jr. in, the, in terms well, of Well, they're inconsistencies, perjury. put it that way. Okay, but, okay, anyway. 